there is nothing God can't do. You are the source of my strength. Ooh, you are the strength of my life. Oh, I lift my hands in toward. To you. We better get out of there now. I, I'd like you to do me a favor because uh, it's been close to two months since I've stood here. And I don't have the same, uh, I'm not the same. which was the purpose of the season. People used to say a lot, the devil should have killed me when he had the chance. I actually mean it. And he missed. Put that in the chat feed, he missed. Say it out loud, he missed, because I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about you, he missed. You and I should have been cut off, but he missed. If you'll do me a favor, I want you to look up and down your row. Look behind you, see if there are a couple of people around you who you think might get slightly unnerved if you act a complete fool in the next 30 seconds. And I need you to tell them you're gonna have to excuse me for about, you're gonna have to excuse me. Some of you have your purses and Bibles in your hand, put it down. I need you to go ahead and clean off the bottom of your shoes. I need you to get in position. I need somebody to give me to join because I, I can only do so much just in case the cardiologist is watching. I want y'all to look, mute the cameras. I don't even know that. You, she's already running. My godson came from Cincinnati. He told me if I look at him, he's gone. So I'm going to just tell you now. Look around and just say, don't worry about what's about to happen over the next 60 seconds. I got to get this one out. I got to get this one out. Now, I need, I need some crazies that will take off in one direction, a couple crazies in the other direction. Then I need about five of y'all to run the steps. But only if you mean it. And only if you believe that miracles are transferable. That what you see in front of you is also coming to your house. That miracles are not localized to the pulpit, but miracles are the inheritance of God's people. There's another one running. That's a young man. That's good. So I'm going to give you guys just a few seconds with your shouldn't be alive self with your thousand chance after chance after chance self, I'm gonna need you and maybe one person with you to go slap off in this place. And if you're at home, you need to take one minute. Uh, I need you to go after God right now. Now I can't run, but you can. So on your mark, for your pastor, who shouldn't be here, I need you to, and I need a couple more people on your mark, get set, praise him.
old school, Pentecostal, holiness. Give me a beat. And I need these people to go ahead and be free to shout. I need a couple people that don't mind shouting. Anybody got a tambourine? You may be seated. Jesus, get the glory from this moment in a way that you never have before. And I thank you for bringing me back to this place. It was not guaranteed. In fact, it was at one point highly unlikely that I'd be carrying or holding a mic again. What was scheduled in hell was for me to be in a box right there, but I'm on this platform right here because you willed it to be so. And for this and every other blessing, I say thank you. And to the people of God that have prayed and interceded and pushed and fought and cried and, and literally just literally banged on the doors of heaven was like, Lord, not him, not now, and not from this. Thank you for your people around the world. Now let me somehow articulate the veritable cornucopia of thoughts that have been ruminating in this brain of mine. I made the posture of my soul and the humility that comes with the closest call to death. Give me a sobriety and a precision in what I communicate and convey that lives will be changed forever. 
Jesus, your name is the only one that matters. And I'm grateful that I am still called by your name. And I'm in the earth because you will it to be so. No devil in hell, no man or woman can take my life or the life of any of your people. The enemy cannot come into our lives, do anything without express permission from heaven and only that to make us better. You don't allow demonic things to happen to your children unless it's going to be for our good. All things are working together. So I give you honor for a Sunday morning. The thing I used to do routinely and without realizing it had taken it for granted until it was taken away. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you will, muster with your hands the greatest praise you can to God. First of all, good morning. I am overwhelmed with a lot of emotions, so you all will have to bear with me um, while I navigate this moment. I want to thank you for your uncanny commitment and faithfulness to this church and this work. I want to take a moment to speak to our relentless online community, to your unending prayers, your concern, your commitment, your intercession, your participation, all of you who have uh, without information, still trusted God, still believed. And for those of you who uh, people were asking a bunch of goofy questions, I love that you say, but then you still got a little bit of, just a little bit of pepper on your, on your life, that you just gave him a little bit of seasoning, like keep your mouth off my pastor. Don't worry about it. Why you asking? You didn't care before. Why do you care now? I love y'all. I decided I love real people. I don't, I don't care for church people. I love real people. Jesus died for real people. Church people never get a revelation of Jesus because they think they're doing Jesus a favor when they walk in. Real people know we shouldn't even be allowed in here. Where are the real people at? I see one in the balcony. Are there any online? Are there any real people that know? That in your own strength, in your own good, in your own will, you have nothing of value to offer the king. But he chooses. I want to thank um, this church, the staff of this church, who have for the past two months had the unenviable task of navigating the day-to-day -day operations of this church under extreme circumstances not knowing if I was going to live or die, not knowing what was going to become of this work. And they have persevered and pressed through. And I want to ask all of the staff of Relentless Church that's present to stand up so that we can acknowledge you, all staff. While you're standing, would all of the elders stand with the staff, all elders? Volunteers, ushers, you stand. I want everybody to look around that a church is bigger than one man. bigger than one person, bigger than a personality. Thank you all for what you've done, for what you do that I don't know, for the prayers you pray. Thank you for your diligence and your uncanny perseverance. Thank you for what you have sown into God's people. I am forever indebted eternally grateful. Thank you. One more time, can we thank God 
for this church leadership that has continued to push and I need to get a couple more acknowledgements and then I'm going to share what the Lord has put on my heart and if I don't get through it guess what tell your cousins come back to the 1130 because I'm going to be right here preaching again yeah amen that and I'm doing it on purpose to let hell know, not only did you lose, you lost big. Now I'm trying to keep it together because I was told I gotta calm down, but I can't calm down because I shouldn't even be here. Don't play with me. I'm sorry, doctor. Because you have to be careful when they got you on all kinds of medicines and things and they said you can preach but you have to sit down. I'm not sitting down for right now. I just need a couple people that'll stand up with me and for me. I don't like that chair. That is not my lot. I'm not called to that chair. I'm called to be me so I can't just sit there. Set up in that jail, set up in that jail. <laughs> oh, Sophia back, past in peace. Yeah, it was real chill for a second. I had to trick you into thinking I was depressed. I ain't depressed, I'm awake. I want to I want to take a moment and thank my family. I have to do this and then we'll get into the word to my in-laws who um, absolutely critical in um, this health journey to Mr. And Mrs. A.Y. and Bonnie Cotton. Thank you. Thank you for covering these kids. And when I left your couch on Thursday night, I told you, I said, I, I haven't been, you knew I hadn't been feeling well for over a month, but I couldn't take the pain anymore. And I have a really high pain tolerance. And I was sitting on the couch trying to watch Family Feud. And the Holy Ghost said, get up now and go to the hospital. And I told you, I said, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> I walk into the hospital and I say, excuse me, I have shortness of breath and some heart palpitations. It's like, you coming back right now. And they took me back there. They did all this triage. Then I sat back in the lobby for an hour and a half. Couldn't catch my breath. Finally, they took me in. They did x-rays and some general tests. They said, well, we don't see anything muscular. And the Holy Ghost said, don't let this go. I said, well, something else is going on. I said, I fly a lot. The lady said, uh-oh. She said, we need to do a CAT scan on you right now. Let's do a CT scan. They took me in, did the CT scan. 75 hours later when they got the results. Um, I don't know what they're doing back there. I don't know, are they playing Twister? What are, what are they doing? Like, are they playing, what, seriously, like, what are y'all doing? It's six of us back here, and it's 35 of y'all, and it took 19 hours to get Jello, but I'm cool. The nurse is in the room talking to me, laughing, disarming me, and then somebody else rushes in and says, we need to take you to ICU right now. We found blood clots in your lungs. And I'm thinking, well, I'm alive, so I guess they caught it. And then I kept looking at their faces, and I was like, y'all are not encouraging my soul at all. What's your emergency contact? Who's your next of kin? I, hold on now. You're going too far asking about the next of kin. <laughs> Called my wife, who was with our daughter, who just won her last ice skating competition, came in first place. She's six years from the Olympics. Yeah. 
Um, long story very short, when they finally did get me in an ICU bed, and they did whatever that thing is, is that an ultrasound where they can show you what's going to put the gel on there? That's what you did when we had the babies. They showed me where my son was, and that's when I knew he was the son because they showed the da da. But um, <laughs> they showed this thing sitting in my artery, three and a half inches long. And they said, you, you walk in dead with this. You come in dead. 150,000 people die from this. And I'm like, yeah, y'all don't, y'all don't know my grandmother. Y'all don't know Alice. You don't know my mom. You don't know who prayed. And so I need you to understand that I'm talking right now is a miracle by itself. Um, I want to thank my in-laws for their love. I want to thank my mother for her intercession and her prayers. You can't replace a praying mother. And mommy, I want to thank you. Your, your faith was so strong, it was almost shocking. I was almost offended because I was like, Ma, I'm in ICU. She was like, you're going to be fine. I said, I need you to get on a plane. She said, let's talk tomorrow, but you're going to be fine. I said, no, I'm, they got needles. I'm in here. Got my whole tail out with this tiny blanket. Strange people offering me food with no seasoning. Pork cutlet. Mashed potatoes, no butter. Room temperature roll, room temperature butter. But my mother was like, I, 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 I don't feel the anxiety that you feel. I have peace. I know what he told me. Can somebody praise God for a mother that's not moved? So, Mommy, thank you. To my Aunt Sherry, who was a prophet in my life and speaking life, she wasn't able to be here, but her and my Uncle Al are back home in Cincinnati. Auntie, I love you. Thank you for everything. I love you. Um, and then to my wife. To, to sleep in uncomfortable chairs in multiple hospitals, back tore up, not knowing if your husband was going to live or die, dealing with the reality of, was that the baby shaking the rattler? Let, let him shake it. That's fine. He all right. For everything that you did, endured, um, navigating motherhood, wifedom, your own health, a church, figuring out how to navigate all of these different areas, and somehow you kept your mind. to say nothing of the level of resiliency of your heart throughout multiple areas of come hell or high water. No one has walked out vows for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, for sickness and in health like you. I honor you in front of these people and tell you thank you for everything that you did that I saw and many of the things that I didn't see. I also want to tell you all as a church for the life that I have remaining, whatever I want to do for my wife, I'm going to do it. And I don't need your permission. And I don't care what you think. If I want to buy her five houses, I will. If I want to buy her whatever. If that's my expression, 
I will. If that makes you think I'm going to hell, that's your bad theology. But don't talk to me about her because I saw what she sacrificed. And I'm a blesser every time I can. You got something to say? I'm going to handle my house. You handle yours. I stay out of your business. You stay out of mine. That's all I want. This woman prayed, fought, cried. And I haven't always been everything I needed to be, but she's been right there. So don't anybody say anything to me about whatever it is I choose to do to bless her. Now I got a few minutes. Jordan, I feel like preaching. I'm supposed to sit down. I'm not sitting down. But if I feel something, then I'm going to sit down. Be <laughs> like, I'm not tired yet. Well, there it goes. It just it hit me right there. It's right there. There it is. I'm going to lay, lay down by the riverside. <laughs> I need somebody to go to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. I want to thank our Atlanta campus. For those who are not, yeah, Atlanta, 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 are you in the house? They drove from our Atlanta campus. For those who don't know the tradition here, I'm about to share the word of the Lord. Everyone who has the physical ability to stand, please do so. Today of all days. Today of all days. There are a lot of things that I want to say, and I'm going to try to do so succinctly within the construct of the time that I have. For those who are tithers and who give offering like me, you notice we haven't had tithe and offering yet. There's a reason. Because I wanted you to hear what I had to say before you decided to give whatever it is the Lord puts on your heart to give. But we're not going to do transactions anymore. It's not just going to be mechanical. We're going to know what we're doing and why we're doing it. And we're going to have a heart of worship as we do it. John chapter 11. Start at the first verse. Now a certain man was sick. John from Cincinnati. The town of his mom, Alice, and her sister, Sherry. <laughs> it was that Alice who prayed every day and lived a holy life, who walked with a fragrant oil and wiped Jesus' feet with her obedience whose son, John, was sick. I'm going to go back and read this again because until you start putting yourself in the action, this word won't ring true to you. Now, a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. He's getting glory through it. Put that in the chat feed. He's getting glory through it. The thing that hurts, the thing that makes no sense, he's getting glory through it. The disparate situations that seem to have no resolution, he's getting glory through it. Doctors reports and reports from supervisors and reports from your own mind that have already declared your demise are incorrect and insufficient 
because they do not line up with the express word of the Lord over your life. He's getting glory through it. Now, do me a favor, go to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Go to the ninth verse. Ninth verse. 12 and 9. Now a great many of the Jews knew that Jesus was there and they came, not for Jesus' sake only, but that they also, that they might also see Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. But the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. Why would you want to kill a miracle? This sickness is not unto death. Jesus gets Lazarus up. He's about to die himself. He's walking into the city. You've got less than a week to go. And he's having a meal. He's with Lazarus. But the Pharisees are meeting because we need to kill Jesus and Lazarus. Because people are turning towards Jesus because Lazarus is up out of the ground. There are people who were hoping that you'd stay dead. Three of y'all caught it. The rest of you like, oh, I don't know. I've never been in the hospital. Something in your life died. Whether it was a hope or a dream or a thought or a vision or maybe you killed something with bad decisions, sin, mismanagement. But it was the hope of some that you would never get up. And I'm so glad that you disappointed them. My first day out and about um, after a doctor's appointment, I told my wife, I said, let's go get some food. I'm going to take you to get some food. And we were walking around uh, in this mall um, near where the restaurant was, and we saw some people we knew. And one of them said, jokingly, I thought you were dead. <laughs> I'm like, that's not funny. But I've known this person a long time, but I thought it was really deep because I know that there are people who are going to say that, particularly with what God's about to do in my life and in the life of this church. And so I need you to find three people, just look at them really, really strange and be like, I thought you were dead. See how offensive that is? He was like, don't say, I thought you were, we know you not. She's like, don't speak that. I didn't say you were going to die. I said, I thought you. And go ahead and be seated. There are a lot of things. I got some string. Thank you. Next time, just come get it. I wasn't sure what I was going to say when I stood here, but I did tell the Lord that whatever comes out of my mouth will come from the most true place that I can offer. Church, as we have seen it, as it is constructed, is not a healthy place. I am concerned that we, the church, is very much like my chest. Because there are too many things blocking the ability of the Holy Spirit to flow within his church as he wills to do. The doctor said that this blood clot formed in my right leg years ago when I had surgery to repair a torn patella tendon. That was 12 years ago. And I remember them telling me then, you're not going to be able to fly for a while because of the danger of blood clots. I don't understand any, didn't understand it, wasn't really concerned about it. When you're young, you think you got forever. And 
what happened is I had been feeling pain in the back of this leg for some months and didn't know why. Then I began to feel pain in the middle of my back and I thought I had pulled a muscle, didn't know why, and it had been there for a month. And one night, Pastor Robert, I was laying down in my bed. I laid sideways because I, you know, kind of in the fetal position and all of a sudden I couldn't breathe. For about 30 minutes, I was trying to catch my breath in the bed. And it wasn't until I got to the doctor, because that was some weeks ago, the doctor said that was the night you were supposed to die. I know it doesn't seem like much, but God remembers every prayer you pray. See, because when I was little, I used to pray, now I lay me. I pray the Lord my soul. If I should die before I wait, I pray the Lord my Let me tell you something. That wasn't just for the night I prayed it. God remembers the prayers you prayed from 20 years ago, 15 years ago, and he will bring them back when you need them the most. I'm trying to go somewhere. I know I'm going slow, but this is my first time back in two months. It's very easy to become mechanical with all this. And then when you're sitting in a room and the doctor tells you you can't move for two days because if this clot moves one inch, even in this hospital, we can't help you. I was like, y'all got all these machines on me and you, I'm looking at you and the surgery room is right there and you telling me this? She said, if that thing moves, None of us in here can help. I guess I was supposed to be scared. But I told Aventer, I said, tell the saints to pray. Because normally you keep stuff quiet, but the Holy Ghost said, tell God's people to pray. Tell my people to pray. And let me tell you something. I don't know what. I don't know who y'all are, but I'm glad I know y'all. Because when I tell you, a few hours later, it was some elders down at the hospital. Elder Buchanan came down there. Pastor Lamoris and Magus drove through there. Demarcus and Shalisha came through there. Uh, 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 yes, yeah, Cortani, Heather, Lily. They done snuck up. First of all, wasn't no security in Dothan. I love Dothan, but you could come in there with a backpack full of everything. Like, Come on upstairs. Just whatever's in the bag is fine. Jesus will fix it. <laughs> Can you please check the serial killer with a machete in his bag? Please. <laughs> the body of Christ is in trouble and the earth is in trouble and I can't come back here and talk to you like nothing happened because I almost died. Death has a way of clarifying the life you have left. And when everyone was gone and all that was in the room was the sound of the machines, I started thinking about my life, how I arrived in this hospital bed with a blood clot sitting in my pulmonary artery that had broken off from my leg. And what you all don't know is that the Holy Ghost had me checking my right leg because there were two more knots, like growths, and there was something in the middle. And it was very painful. And the doctor said something. He said, if another piece of a clot breaks off, and travels, that'll be it. Y'all remember I did this sermon and talked about surely goodness and mercy shall follow you. There were these two knots, but there was something in the middle. And what the Holy Ghost said is there's a clot between these two cysts. I'm keeping it in place. It's not allowed to travel. 
because I will for it not to move. I need you to understand, I did my part. I, did not, I didn't use the restroom. I didn't move. I don't know where that discipline came from. <laughs> but the clot that was here also didn't move. It's a saddle pulmonary embolism. When Jesus was going into the town for his triumphal entry, he said, go get me a colt that no one's ever ridden on. They brought it to him. They put their clothes and made a saddle. He sat on it and walked into his destiny. And what this saddle didn't know is that Jesus came to sit on it. Now, I don't know what God's about to... Re <laughs> There's something that the enemy has plotted against you, but Jesus is about to come sit on it. And I need a thousand people to lose their minds because the thing that's trying to kill you, Jesus is about to sit on. I need you to raise up a sound because you have to live. You cannot die. That was nice, but I said, I need you to give God a sound. The body of Christ is being asked to let the world know that Jesus is real and hope is present. I sat in that bed and I looked at my life and the specter of death didn't scare me. It's not what made me sad. What made me sad was the specter of not finishing. That's what hurt me, Elder Johnny. I'm not afraid of death. To live is Christ, to die is gain. The truth is, I didn't want to be here anymore. Just being honest, please don't judge me. I've shared this. I'm not there anymore. But I was there. The problem with church is we don't allow you to be where you actually are. I've been on this hamster wheel called organized church for my whole life. And the hamster wheel doesn't get you saved. Religion doesn't get you saved. Nice songs don't get you saved. Even great communicators don't get you saved. The power of the Holy Ghost in a service, a real encounter with Jesus gets you saved. And we got a lot of people that go to church, but we don't have a lot of saved folk. Because saved is not coming to church. Saved is what you live when you leave the parking lot. I attended church, but the life that I was living didn't line up with that word. So I need to ask myself, am I saved or am I just an attendee? I had blood clots, masses of material hindering the free flow of blood to necessary and vital organs. The church has blood clots. We have blockages when it comes to our politics, when it comes to our personal preferences, when it comes to our preferred list of sins. We have grace for people who sin like us. Then we have a special hell for people who sin differently than us. And you think you're doing God a favor putting your politics in front of the cross, but you never saw Jesus talk politics. He was too busy helping poor people and feeding hungry people and getting dead people out of the ground. Hey, I have blood clots and, and some of them were spiritual. I had some bitterness. You need to write this down. Bitterness is a blood clot. It hinders the ability of the flow of the Holy Spirit to move freely in your life. 
Bitterness is a blood clot. You know what else is a blood clot? Unforgiveness. Write these down. We're going to grow in here. Unforgiveness is a blood clot. You know what else is a blood clot? Envy. You're, you're stopping the flow of God in your life when you're so angry that somebody else is doing something or achieving something and you don't know what their call is, what their purpose is, or what the cost is. The best thing you can do is celebrate other people and stay focused on what God is calling you to do. I have become very bitter with church. I've been in church my whole life. I was talking to a, a friend of mine who's a pastor last night, and we talked about the fact that we help to create and perpetuate the very ministry machine that we're in. And then that machine spit us out because we didn't fit the construct anymore. But you can't spit me out because you, you didn't make me. And what I realized is I had become bitter. Can I be honest? I had become bitter because there were times that I was praying to God, waiting on an answer that didn't come, and I assumed that he didn't care or that he was not going to move in my favor. This is what everyone here needs to know. God answers all prayers. Sometimes the answer is no. Thank you, sir. No one wants to shout about that because we want God to do everything we want. And he's like, I love you too much to give you what you're asking for because it would actually take you further from my will. I had bitterness. I had bitterness from listening to people take my sermons, add about three new words, and post it like they came up with it. I, came, I became bitter. I became bitter at people who I opened doors for who, when I was in trouble, wouldn't pick up the phone. I became bitter. I became bitter because of different attacks. I became bitter because of my own life. Bitterness was hindering the flow of God. Everything is not about other people. You know, well, the pandemic and the coronavirus, and that's why people ain't coming back. That might be, but a part of it is I wasn't living holy. And when your pastor is not living a life that honors God, then people wonder, is the God you're talking about real for you? I told you I can't come back the same. I'm not, man, I don't want this, man. I don't have time for this, man. I don't have time for this, man. I can't, I can't sit down no more. Thank you. Thank you, Lamoris. I, thank you for being real strong with your tiny shirt on. I really appreciate that. And thank you for preaching over these weeks. And Pastor Av, thank you for preaching over these weeks. And Bishop Kevin and YPJ. And Pastor Q, Pastor DeMarcus in Atlanta. All of the people that preach the word. But I need you to know that while I was in that bed, I took personal assessment. Because you can blame everybody else or you can look in the mirror. And I decided, Lord, let me look at me and I need you to show me me. And that takes humility. Now, some people left wrong. And the Lord will deal with them. But some people left because I was not an effective pastor because I was new. I was a good number two, best number two. But I was a zero when it came to being a number one because I'd never been a number one. And only a few people will have grace for you when you're in the middle of a thing. Everybody will show up next year when this thing is where it needs to be, once the foundation. But the ones who stayed during foundation, those are the ones that get the double portion. So either I'm gonna throw a mic or somebody's about to shout. But I need you to understand that when death comes, resurrection is imminent. I don't need a keyboard player, I play it by myself. I was looking at my life and I realized that the life that I was living was antithetical to scripture in critical areas. And I'm, I've been, I'm very proud. Stay out of my business, I stay out of yours. No, 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 that's not how it works when you're in leadership. 
I wanted it to work that way. I want to I wanna mind my own business. When I'm at Cracker Barrel, I will wave at your table. I might even pay for your food. But let me eat with my kids because I don't never get a chance to just sit there and eat with the kids. You, you see what I'm saying? But what I realized is that everything that I do matters. Dion, when my wife put that post up to ask for prayer, Thousands of people responded. People I hadn't heard from. Who I know don't like me. I'm under no illusion. Everybody wasn't hoping I'd come out of there. Because as long as I'm alive, you can't just do what you want. Because I'm going to preach this book. I became bitter at the rat race of contemporary church culture who can go viral the fastest who can dress the coolest who can kill us with some awe inspiring revelation when the victory is who can be faithful in their marriage <laughs> who can raise their kids to be decent human beings who love God My goals have become very small. Love God, love my wife, love my kids, serve this church. I need to tell y'all something. When I was in the in-between place between here and there, oh God, you're going to have to help me here. Paul said in Corinthians, he said, I know a man 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. But he was caught up to the third heaven. He heard inexpressible things, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. I'm going to share with you what I saw. Brandon, ain't that that principal? That real brilliant guy right here? Ain't that him? Ain't that you? That's you, ain't it? I knew it was you. Just to see an African-American educator at the highest levels, it matters in today's society. And I celebrate every educator, every administrator, black or white. I want you to know that what you're doing at that school that I observe with my own eyes is stopping death and changing a community. And I want to celebrate you. I saw something, Elder Lois. I saw an arena, and the outside of the arena was matte silver. It was not shiny. There was no light. The door may have been 1,000 feet high. With my left arm, I tried to open the door, but it opened on its own. It didn't open because I was pushing. The door opened, and inside of this arena, everything in the arena was made of light. There was no shadows. I saw no faces. I heard no sound. I saw the form of people, but not their faces. Where their face was, was light. I was walking. I was getting ready to walk in. I was right there. The floor was all light. I was about to step in and go around the corner, and something pulled me back. Closed the door which means not yet. But I saw it. And I'm saying this to you, my sister, because I need you to know that heaven is a real place. I need everybody in here to hear me. Somebody's going to get saved today. Do not play with God. Heaven is real and hell is real. I believe what I saw is what is described in Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, I believe that I caught a glimpse of the gathering place of the witnesses who observe the affairs of men while the plan of God unfolds out of eternity into time. And I caught a glimpse of this arena and then I was pulled back. 
And YPJ sent me a text that will stay with me forever. He said, stay here. Because he knew that if I caught a glimpse, I was gone. But the sadness of not raising my children or loving my wife properly was motivation. And I said, God, let me live to finish my course. Not let me live to be famous. Not let me live to be cool. Not let me live to be known. I want to walk my daughter down the aisle. I want to get my son ready so he can be a mighty man of God, an amazing husband and father. I want to love my wife like Christ loved the church. But what I realized is that bitterness had taken a hold of me and had caused me to begin to become cynical about the deep things of God. You don't need a cynical pastor. You need a faith-filled pastor. And I had gotten weary. Anybody ever gotten weary? Don't get weary in well-doing, for you shall reap a reward if you faint not. And I would have been fainted. Been fainted. I was listening to you when you preached it. I, honey, I fainted, been fainted. They got the smelling salts, got me up, fainted again. Since this is my first time back, I got some time. I need, I need you to hear this. I was filled with anger because I felt like my life was not having impact. Something about being in a closed setting causes you to highlight your broken places and you don't rehearse your history and how God brought you through. And I started believing the lie that no one wants to hear what you have to say because all of this was designed to mute my voice because God is not finished with my voice. And the only one that can shut my mouth is me because the people who tried it couldn't and the devils who tried it couldn't. I'm the only one that could. So I have to stop participating with the enemy. Yeah. Holiness, young people, matters. Being a pastor whose name is not in bullcrap matters. I want to apologize to my church for any moment where I obfuscated the name of God with foolishness from my flesh. My issues have nothing to do with God's holiness and no one should conflate the two. <laughs> holiness still matters. Integrity still matters. A move of God still matters. Miracle signs and wonders still matter. Lazarus was on his way to dying. Jesus said, no, he ain't. This sickness is not unto death. He gonna get up. And he got up and the Pharisees still tried to kill him because as long as you get up, you are evidence that resurrection is not localized to one man. Lord Jesus, the reason why you should shout is because you are evidence. Put this in the chat feed, write it down. I am evidence. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? Does anybody believe what I'm saying? Do you understand that your life is evidence? There are people right now that still don't know how you made it. Who am I talking to? <laughs> they don't know how you survived. They don't know why you still shout. They don't know why your hand is waving. But you do. I wish I had 17 people in here. I'm shouting because I'm evidence. 
I'm running because I'm evidence. I'm waving because I'm evidence. And I'm evidence because Jesus spoke into my grave, got me up. And I had some friends that would come and get the grave clothes off. I am evidence. Is there anybody other than me that's evidence of the resurrection? Ten second praise break. Ten second praise break. Somebody shout evidence. I know we got another service in an hour and a half. But this is too important. Because I need you to hear a couple other things. I've been in church my whole life, but just being in church doesn't mean that you'll be close to Jesus. Doesn't mean you'll be close to Jesus. Proximity is not the same thing as intimacy. Just because you near doesn't make you close. I've been in the car with people I don't even speak to. Just because you're near me doesn't mean you know me. There are people who've been in church their whole life, have no character of Christ, don't reflect the verbiage of Christ, don't know how to treat people, highly insecure, use their issues as a scapegoat to treat you like trash, and then throw their hands up when you start bucking back. Like, oh, where did that come from? It came from you. You got what you gave. You reaped where you sowed. I ain't taking no mess off people in this season. I almost died. You gonna respect me, respect my space, respect my boundaries, I'll do the same for you. Don't get familiar. The problem with many of us, if we have allowed people to treat us common when God has made you rare. And the reason why some people in your life don't value you properly is because you have not reminded them of the rarity of your presence. If you think you can find another me, go try. Some of y'all need to help some people in your life because they think they're God's gift, but you the one carrying them. Something's about to break right here. I was sitting in that hospital and I had to talk about the reality that if I die, what happens? I would have died incomplete. And I didn't want that. I didn't want to die incomplete. God has given me a chance. So let me tell you what I'm going to do with that chance. I'm no longer interested in service as usual. I need to see God's power every time these doors open. I need an intercessory team that be on their face, who smell like anointing oil, whose hands are greasy. I need somebody laying hands on every tumor and every sickness. Every service, we're gonna have elders spread out in this sanctuary, we praying. We're gonna pray and lay hands according to scripture and the, and the sick will recover. If any of you are sick, let them call on the elders of the church. Anoint them with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. I don't want to just come here and go home. I need a miracle. I need God to show up. Sitting in that hospital looking on that camera because it wasn't, it was not guaranteed that I was coming out of there. Now, while I respect online for those who can't get here, for those of us who can, we know it's not optional. We got to get in the house. Most of the people may not remember what I said in one of my last sermons before I went into the hospital, which is world powers are being set down. Prime ministers, Prime Minister Shinze, Shinzo Abe, former Prime Minister of Japan, assassinated. Boris Johnson, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, 
sat down. Another one over in the Pacific, South, uh, the, the South Pacific, um, I forget the name of the country, that prime minister, there in, yeah, in Sri Lanka, that prime minister removed. Global powers are being moved. He's also doing the same thing in the kingdom. What he's doing is he's about to remove people who think they have power. But those who have been corrected by humility and adjusted by character are now being redeployed because you can't really tell anybody that God is a resurrection God until you were dead in some area. Now I need a that I need somebody to get this in your soul. Where you been? I need 15 people over there and 18 people over there and 20 over here to give God 30 seconds of praise for the rest of the people that are sitting down. You don't ever leave. If you got a doo-doo, you hold it. I'm not supposed to do that, but I got to do it. I know you worry. But if I go, it's because I was supposed to. But God's been too good to me to sit in that stupid chair for this whole time. Hold on, because if you start that now, we're not going to get it back. I love you. Is that what you said? I think she said, I love you, Pastor God. I love you too. I feel like I'm at an award show. <laughs> Michael Jack, I love you too. I love you too. I want church to not be about how nice your outfit is. I don't want church to be how cool and famous your pastor is. What I want are deep, abiding relationships. Today, after I pray y'all out of here, I'm going to the back of this church to that door. And I'm going to shake your hand. And I'm going to hug your neck. Because I ain't no star, I'm your pastor. Aventure, I've been in so much pain because of the transition here. I felt like, not a pastor, I felt like a step pastor because their dad went to another vineyard. So now I'm coming in, but you already have history with your dad. I'm the step pastor. And no one knows what it's like to carry the debt of another man's vision, spiritual and financial, while still trying to navigate your own manhood. It's not an excuse. Because the truth is, there are a lot of places of reconciliation that have to happen. I almost died. I'm going on a forgiveness tour. And I'm going to say I'm sorry to some people that I hurt. And I'm going to release some people that hurt me. Because I've been holding on to that pain for so long. And I wanted them to hurt. I wanted them to suffer. I'm going to share something with you the Lord shared with me. Changed my life. I said, Lord, there's some people that hurt me deeply. How come you haven't addressed them? How come you haven't punched them in the face? How come they ain't got no flat tire? How come you don't, you know, punish them? Take them on out of here. Let them come see you early. The Lord said, I could do that. He said, but then what do I do with the people who pray to me about you? So be careful. 
Because there's some people that you've offended or didn't keep a promise to or let down. And what I realized is that how I want to live my life going forward is with deep abiding relationships with real people, building the Lord's church in a way that honors him. And you all have been unbelievably loving and kind. Our Atlanta church, you all have been unbelievably loving and kind. But the vision for this church is changing now. It's changing because I've changed. We're going to have eventually 24-7 intercessory prayer, worship, a healing center. In the coming weeks, you will be hearing about some of the necessary places of transition. Because of my health and the journey that I'm on, I am not going to be able to travel the same way I was in the past. And so Atlanta, we are going to have to rethink and take a new journey in how we gather. Because being on a plane that doesn't pressurize properly is not going to be conducive to my life. And I'm not called to die for the church. Jesus did that already. There are people who are waiting for a pastor that doesn't just preach, but who leads with a well-lived life. That is the only thing I desire at this point, to live a life pleasing to the Lord, that we don't besmirch his name. And I need you to know that our church is in competition with no church anywhere for any reason. And to the beautiful people of Greenville, South Carolina, what was Redemption Church, which became Relentless Church, and it is Relentless Church. It is Relentless Church. It is Relentless Church. Let us continue this great work together. I want you to know that I'm not going to kill myself trying to preach every time the door is open. I'm going to be here. You're going to see me. I'm not going to be sitting in the office 45 hours a day. That's not my calling. I am going to measure out my calling and I'm going to do it in a way that prioritizes my health the health of my family first. And I would expect you to do the same. I also want to say to Greenville, you are the most beautiful, resilient people. I love this city. I love this region. I love that God brought us here. I'm so grateful. And I want y'all to continue this journey with me. Next week, Pastor Robert Morris will be preaching here. If you don't know who Pastor Robert Morris is, he is the pastor of Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas. They are the most generous church in America. In America. God has blessed them tremendously, miraculously. They have multiple campuses, all of them paid off. And they have missions ministries all over the world and it starts with their pastor and he's preaching in his words the most important message he's ever preached and he's preaching it and he's sharing it with us I'm saying that because I am committed to bringing the most necessary relevant voices to now help us navigate this new space I'm not getting back on the hamster wheel I'm not going to run around trying to impress you or people. I'm not trying to be internet famous. But the people of Greenville and the people of Relentless need to know they have a pastor here. 815 and 1130. We need, you need to know. 
And so me and my wife are committing to this work in a fresh way that prioritizes health, but also prioritizes your development in the most important area, which is a deep abiding relationship with Jesus Christ and with one another. Today, this service could have been all emotion and we run around and shout, but I decided to share with you the core of my heart because death has a way of clarifying the remainder of the life you have. You and I will both live and not die. We have work to do for God's kingdom. For those who are in the marketplace, areas of education, philanthropy, finance, arts, entertainment, my prayer is that you will take your area of enterprise and maximize and make the people around you better. And then from there, my prayer is that God would expand your reach, your influence, your scope. And I hope that you all will journey with me and Aventer as we navigate this new normal, a new reality. And I didn't want you to give not a nickel until you heard because you need to know why and what you're sowing into. You're sowing into a global vision. You're sowing into a local church. You're also sowing into the health and healing of the people in this community and those around the world. You need to know that a portion of everything that comes into our church unrestricted is going to go towards missions. Missions is not just in Africa or in Asia. Missions is in Gaffney. Missions is in Greenwood. Missions is in South Spartanburg. You understand what I'm saying? Missions is off Woodruff Road. I'm tired of us thinking that you got to go somewhere with people that don't speak English to help them. It's some people down the street that need Jesus in English. Here's what I'd like for those of us who are tithers like me, who give offering like me. I want you to prepare your gift now. Today I'm doing, I'm doing a thank offering today because I'm not even supposed to be here. What's up, nephew? I'm not supposed to be here and I wanted to wait. I wanted us to do this together. If you need an envelope, lift your hands. Everyone is sewing today. If you need an envelope, lift your hands. Keep your hand lifted until an usher serves you. I'm believing God for a harvest. And what I've learned over these close to two months, the reality is people connect to the lead voice. But I also want to thank you for your uncommon commitment during my sickness and my absence that has allowed the ministry to continue. But today I'm believing God for something yeah. unprecedented. That's the word you're going to hear in this church, unprecedented. Now I'm gonna just tell it to you like this. The next service, I actually have some points I'm gonna preach, but I needed to talk first. So 815, we had a conversation. I need you to spread the word. Pastor John is not only alive, he's redoubling his commitment to pastoring and shepherding this church in a way that honors God. But I'm also committed, and this is super important, to not keeping the pattern going that almost got me killed. And that pattern is tap dance and show off and shout, but don't have any balance and nothing really changes and so no healing can occur for me. So I end up giving you what is good, but I'm not good while I give it. I want to participate in the miracle of Relentless Church. Amen. I need everyone who's giving to lift your gifts in the air. It's a billion dollar Sunday. It's a billion dollar Sunday. 
There are people in this room that will have that level of resource, but you don't have that level of resource without that level of seed faith. Some of y'all was praying for that billion dollars at the Powerball because you know in South Carolina, you can win and never tell nobody your name. I was like, Lord, if they win, I know they're going to be in here. I'm going to point them right out. Tithe <laughs> off the gross. <laughs> Not your cash value. Why do I know that? I heard about it. <laughs> We're lifting our gifts in the air. Father, we are Relentless Church. Reports of our death have been greatly exaggerated. The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified through it. I thought you were dead. Nah, uh-uh. Jesus got me up. And he got me up for a purpose. And that purpose is yet to be revealed. But I'm going to live it out. And since, since death couldn't stop me, neither can you. And since death couldn't stop me, I'm not going to stop myself. So if you're ready to give, listen to me. There's two things about to happen. We're going to give. For those who are electronic, you can just wave at those who have envelopes. You can make your way. Then I want you to go back to your seat. We're going to have an altar call because many people are about to get saved. Let's, let's give this offering. While this offering is going on, I need you to see the video of what the doctors said to me. I want you to give while that's happening. Are we go they showing the video of the offering? What are we showing? Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Well, I, no, that's fine. I want you, for those who are online who say, Pastor, I want to give, but I don't know how, watch this very short video that shows you how to do that safely and securely. Are you ready to give? We've designed a quick and easy way for you to do so. Start by telling us what location you like to give from. Greenville, Atlanta, or Rock Online. Text 1-866-730-4483. Like to schedule your giving? By using the PushPay app, you can schedule how often you like to give. You can even select what dates you like to start and end your giving. Are you an international giver? We've got you covered. Just go to the PushPay app and click Need Help. Then continue as guest and follow the on-screen prompts. We thank you for your generosity. If I could get everyone's hearts for a moment. First of all, for the backpack giveaways, if you want to get in your car, line up for the backpack giveaway, you want to head towards the Birdland Drive Road area. If you do not need a backpack, then you want to head towards Haywood Road so that you're not caught in that traffic. Also, FAB sign up, head to the north entrance. Which way is the north entrance? Over here, that's the north entrance. I'd also like all of the bold members to stand up. Bold. Is it, shout out to the bold members. There it is one more time. <laughs> Tell me what bold stands for again. Building organizational leadership and development. I want to thank you. You all came once before, but I want to thank you all, each of you as an administrator in the public school system. So we have some accomplished gentlemen who, who are on the front lines of making sure that our children have the best education possible. Can we thank these five gentlemen? Thank you for what you do. Thank you for being here today. I don't think it was an accident that you were here. I think I needed to see you all to be reminded that uh, when you do things at a high level, uh, sometimes it can become very lonely, but it's necessary. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for being here today. And however this church can assist you in your work, we stand with you and we stand behind you. All right? I want to say thank you for allowing me to just tell my heart today. It's very important for me to be able to have a conversation. 
I can't just run back into, ah, I can't do that. But I can have this moment to let you know that things are shifting, but we are going into a beautiful and healthy place. And it starts with the humility and self-awareness to know that change starts with me. So I'm going on a forgiveness tour. I'm running around, I'm getting it right. I'm gonna make sure anybody that I was hurt by, uh, they know that I released them and anybody that I hurt and I find out I'm going to them, I'm gonna get it right. Life is short, listen to me. And now the doors of the church are open. And let me say this, while you're standing, it's a lot of people that need to get to this altar today. You've been playing with salvation. Don't play with salvation. I'm here to tell you, Jesus is real. Heaven is real. The only way you get to heaven is by confessing Christ. Let me make this clear. Hell is not filled with people that God sent there. Hell is filled with people who send themselves there. You send yourself by not acknowledging the blood of Jesus. If you need to give your life to Jesus or you need to rededicate and get it right, I need you and everything you came with to meet me at this altar. Do not wait. Do not wait. Do not wait. Somebody got to get saved. Somebody got to get rededicated. Somebody somewhere. I need some people praying. It could be that we have online people joining. Here she comes. Walk with her. Let's stay with her, elders. Is there anybody else? Hold on. There are some men that need to make a move to this altar. Do y'all understand the flames of hell are real? You need to make sure your life is right with Jesus. If you have any sin in your life, you need to confess it now and give it to Jesus. If there's anything in your life that hinders God from having free flow, you need to give it to Jesus. We're going to do better than that. We got some men of God coming. They're not the only ones. Bring y'all closer to this middle right here, please. Anybody else? On behalf of my wife and I, I want to welcome each one of you. Whether you're coming, baptism, new member, rededication, you're here. Behind you is a family, and we are family, and we fight for our family. We don't play about our own. You're not alone. I want you to pray this prayer with me along with the people behind you. Very simple prayer. Lord Jesus... It's me. I confess with my mouth, believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I receive the free gift of salvation, not through my works, the finished work of the cross. The blood is enough to pay for all my sins. Now, Holy Spirit, come live inside and teach me how to be more like Jesus each and every day. You are my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family. For those who prayed that prayer online, text the number on your screen. Text SAVED to 95555 so that we can connect to you. Listen, next week, Pastor Robert Morris is going to be teaching us about generosity and putting God first. I need you to tell everyone you know, our church is changing, we're growing, we're maturing. I need all of us to be here next week because God is going to meet us, invite some people. You need this message. 
Pastor Robert Morris doesn't have to go anywhere or do anything. But him sharing this message is significant because of how he sees our church. That being said, I'd like you all to walk in this direction. Are they going with you, Megan, Pastor Megan? Okay, we're gonna follow Pastor Megan and let's celebrate. I love y'all. I'm glad to be back. I need y'all to let me get my strength up over some time. This medicine gets on my nerves. I got me, I gotta go take some now. But I'm alive. Uh, so. Yeah, you're short today. You ain't got no heels on. So, you're not tall. It's okay. Um, I'm going to the back. We're going to the back. We're going to hug your neck. Now, listen, please. I know that your life story is important. I just don't have time to hear it today. We got another service. There's other people behind you. And if you're going to talk, get a nice premium piece of gum. Get it in this area here. Don't be all in this area after I almost died and then you kill me with the... <sighs> don't kill me with the... <sighs> Hallelujah. I don't need the... <laughs> Holy Ghost. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord God be gracious to you, show you his favor, and give you his peace. I love you, Relentless. I love you, Relentless Online. I love you, Relentless Atlanta. Let us run to the back, and we'll see you in a moment.